We are rolling. Welcome to the Poundcast brand. We are welcome. Duh. Duh. What's up with you? Today on our show is just going to be one-on-one, me and Brent. One-on-one. You know, we're gonna you know if this works out good, we should just do one-on-one every week, but we'll see how it we're goes. Gonna, you know? We're going to get to know each other. <laughs> you know what I mean? I <laughs> can't wait to get to know you, man. Man, I've been waiting years to get to know you. Finally, I, I can ask the questions I've been meaning to ask for decades now. Oh, yeah, it's going to be fun. We're going to do a... We're going to do a questionnaire at one point. We're going to do a questionnaire that's called 36 questions that lead to love. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Should we do that for after dark or should we do that in the normal episode? <sighs> we'll see, you know, maybe we'll see do, if we maybe even get we'll to it do... because well, I already, I also posted on Facebook. We have a Poundcast Facebook. And of course I posted on Instagram and a lot of questions from just ran, you know, just, listeners came in too so people might be asking what is after dark after dark is a patreon only bonus uh section of our poundcast that is only available to patrons if you go to patreon.com slash poundcast you could subscribe today and become a pound pimple a true pimple yes and it's pretty cool because there's also other bonus little things on there and little bonus perks that come up and come up sometimes and uh, little things here and there. It's fun. You know, one of those perks is our uh, Hollywood holiday party, which is coming up on December 10th. It's a zoom party. It's a zoom that's, party. And we're going to yeah. chat with all our patrons. And as zoom, that's a Patreon only exclusive event. And so. actually this, to be honest, this episode th- that was yesterday, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you also get early access to the episodes. So those who are on the um, Patreon would already be listening and being like, oh boy, that's right. I get to tune that's in tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. Yes. Um, so um, yeah, so much for that. Yeah. So but that's hey, one, that's one thing, you know, we might have more parties. We might have more zoom parties like that. Yeah, we might have a, who knows? We might have a Valentine's day party. Ooh. <laughs> we Think about have, that for February. Should, every, yeah. Valentine's. We can maybe we can make some matches happen. St. Patrick's Day, we'll have a St. Patrick's Day party. What's the holiday of every month? What's the oh, holiday of January? Is there a holiday of January? New Year's Day. New, I know. New Year's Day. Uh, the isn't uh, well Martin Luther King Martin Luther King Day. Yeah, we'll have a Martin Luther King party. Who knows? Sky's the limit. We can do. Um, you know, we can do a hundred man march or something. A hundred man and woman march. On Hundred Man Zoom. Zoom, and we can do. Let's see what's on April. April, we've got the April Fools' party. April Fools' party, where we just try to just do the silliest stuff. Oh, we could do Cinco de Mayo, you know. We could do Cinco de Mayo. Um, on in May, we can do Memorial uh, Day, Father's Day. <laughs> we could do June. What's June like? Graduate. We can celebrate graduations in June. Yeah. yeah Father's Day or graduations. Yeah. July, we can sum- celebrate the summer stol- solstice. If that's what is that happening in July or August? Maybe it is July. I don't know. Wait, then, you know what? That's, you know, obviously July 4th, but then oh, July August, 4th. August, what the hell? You know, holidays are in August. We'll find one. Summer, <laughs> we'll just celebrate the sun. Well, actually, we can celebrate. It'll just August. be summer party. <laughs> summer party, yeah. The Zoom for okay. summer party. You want to hear the, uh, you want to hear all real quick. This is kind of interesting. Wait, hold on. You know what we could do? We can wear, you know, (laughs) beach clothes, beach clothing, but do it on zoom, you know? Anyway, go on. This is kind of interesting. There's holidays for every day of the year. August 1st is friendship day, international forgiveness day, national girlfriends day, national Mahjong day, national mountain climbing day, national raspberry cream pie day. Okay. Sister's Day. And that's only August 1st. Wow. Guess what August 2nd is? <laughs> National Ice Cream Day. Ice Cream Sandwich Day. National Ice Cream Sandwich Day. Guess what August 3rd is? Oh, grab, goodness. Some, grab Some Nuts Day. Grab National, Some Nuts Day. Yeah, National Watermelon Day. National Chocolate Chip Cookie Day is the 4th. Let's see if there's any... Uh, Work like a dog day is August fifth. 
August 6th is Wiggle Your Toes Day. And look, look. it's also National Fresh Breath Day. Look, the bottom I mean, line I, is you got to go to patreon.com slash poundcast and get yes, in on this the, action. That's the that's bottom the, line. That's the bottom line. The, the next line is that if you are a, a, ve- a vegan person or a vegetarian person or even a carnivore, check out louisvilleveganfoods.com because they have vegan jerky and it's not just good for vegans. It's good for anybody who likes snacks. I, you know, I eat meat sometimes and I also enjoy Louisville vegan jerky. Even though and there's no meat. It's also for people who just want to eat the whole bag for a whole meal. Why not live a little bit? You know what I mean? I mean, you know, it's your, your you know, you're a grown I've up. I've done it. You can do what you want. I've done it. You know, I've got to be honest with you. Right? Take a whole bag. As a, a whole. Meal. Once you take one bite, it's like, now I got to finish this thing. You well, know? it's like once you pop, you can't stop. Once you pop, you can't stop. You know? Yeah. And you know what? Don't worry. You can keep eating. They'll make more. <laughs> um, so, yeah so they, uh, they are our proud sponsor of course louisvilleveganfoods.com you just go there and if you want to buy online and not go to a store you could go there and order like fill up your cart to the brim and then use the code word poundcast and get 20% off your entire order that's right Brent wow that's under 50 I, still, I still I say this every week but I still can't get over the savings sometimes, you know? It's I mean, unbelievable. 20% is just, to me, it's just unbelievable. I think they're just breaking even at that point. I think that they're, they're just sort of just giving it, practically giving it away. They're, they're practically great. giving it, look, they're giving it away at 20% off. So get to louisvilleveganfoods.com, use the code word poundcast, or just buy it at Whole Foods, Sprouts. Many other retailers are, 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 are stocking their shelves because this jerky is in demand. You understand? It's handbagged in the USA. You get it. It has a shelf life of nine months. Okay? That's right. That's There's right. lots of different flavors to pick from. And the kids are going to love it. And the best part, that's a great way to support the Poundcast. You know? So, okay. Next up. I got, I want to mention that. So December 31st at yes, 8 30 PM, I'm doing the new year's Eve show. I normally do in Oakland with Natasha Legero, Moshe Kasher and Andrew Michon, but this time we're doing it online. Um, and it, we also joining us will be Reggie Watts and Fred Armisen. And again, this starts at 8 30 p.m. but doors will be at 8 10 or so p.m pacific time okay pacific time. doors <laughs> yeah virtual doors so basically um there's two tiers of tickets there's a sort of vip ticket which is a little more expensive and it's you 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 would be in the zoom so your laughter can be heard and you can be it feels more like you're at a show you know and then the economy ticket is uh, just on YouTube that you'll just, you can, you'll see, uh, an unlisted link on YouTube. Um, but you know, it, it'll feel more, you can see the other people and stuff in the zoom. So that one's kind of, that's why that one is uh, a higher tier. And, um, yeah, there'll be a countdown at 10 PM Pacific time. So that means for central time, it's a midnight countdown <laughs> and, we also will do a uh, no congratulations Chicago. You know, and, yeah, they um, really. I mean, that's the that's the winning city of the of the country. You know, it's one well, of the you best, know, one you of the know. best one of the best cities in the country. So you might as well, well celebrate well. their New Year's. That should be priority. And also, uh, we'll do a quick mini countdown uh, for East Coast as well at their midnight. But the reason why we're doing it this time is figured we could cover the country as best as possible that way because if we if we did the countdown on the west coast it would have been you know 3 a.m for east coast and that that ain't gonna work that ain't gonna cut you can't you could have you could have pre-taped it and you know maybe next year if this pandemic is still raging (laughs) pre-tape it and just roll it at the you know corresponding times that's true now look you can just search for new year's eve comedy mega show 
on Eventbrite. That's where you can get tickets. Or you can go to my Instagram account, which is Brent Weinbach Comedy. Um, and the link is right there as well. So go do that. And oh, and there's an early bird special right now. If you get your ticket before December 20th, it's, I think it's, it could be a, I don't know. It's like a $5 difference or something like that. Anyway, do it now. Okay. Well, speaking of YouTube, let's get right into the show here. But speaking of YouTube, we are on YouTube and I just got some new glasses today. And I thought, Brent, I would, I would, I'm going to premiere them right on the show. Here's really? what, ha here's what happened. My friend, Rob, Robbie, he said, uh, he said he, he, he gets some kind of like eye insurance uh, dividend or something. And he's like, I don't need any glasses or anything, but I have, I might as well cash in this, this, I might as well, if you need any glasses, I'll order them for you under my insurance. And I, and I went on and I said, okay, let's order some glasses. Now this is my new look. They just came in. Really? <laughs> I'm kind of a nerd now. Look, wait a this second. Is for is YouTube. This real? Man. Is this real? This By is the real. Way, if you want to see and look, this. these come with these guys, these clip ons, you know, what do you think, Brent? Well, what do I look like interesting. I showed him the Mikey and he goes, huh? So I don't right. think maybe these aren't great. Well, here's what it is. Um, <laughs> hmm. Look, uh, if you want to weigh in on this, uh, everybody watching uh, or listening, it's youtube.com slash the pound cast. I used to have they're okay. They're, they're dark and they're round. I, you know, I kind of had they, this look in high school. I had this look going on. They look kind of big. I'll just say. That's what I like. I like big glasses. Oh, you like big glasses. And I cannot lie. <laughs> <laughs> I like big glass and I cannot lie. I like no, big no, glasses and I can't, I like big glasses. I cannot lie. No, other upper traumas cannot deny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look, that's one pair. That's oh, one. you got another one. Okay. I figured I never had any prescription sunglasses. So what about these? Now, these are a winner. Okay, you look like a cool guy with that. <laughs> the next time I'm hanging out with Gosling, I'm going to throw these on. So when TMZ rolls up on us, they're not going to wear them looking. You know what my favorite glasses of yours are? When we shot the Streetland demo, that, those glasses. Well, you see, I, those are the usual glasses i usually wear they're like clear because like i'm i'm pale and blonde so i was trying to like you know that's why i went with you know i took a risk all right like i took a risk with these maybe if i stand a little farther away i look a little better you know well they're just they're big and you look it's something different it's just something different <laughs> well you're gonna be you're gonna have to get used to it you're gonna have because you're gonna see a lot of those when hey i'm happy you know what? i'll take next you time i see you in the real world I'll t hey, how, however you want to identify, I accept you. I posted. So, oh, wait, yeah. So what have you been up to, man? <laughs> wait, hold on. Before we start the episode, let's do the intro. I, song, I thought we started the intro. intro. Oh, we didn't even start the show yet. We have to start the did. show yet. Right. So look, we're going to start the show, okay, right now with a theme song remix. This one is, okay, so I did a a sort of interpretive piano cover of the theme song. And then this is someone did a sort of interpretation or cover or slash remix or whatever of what I did sort of. Right. And um, it's really good. And it is from Josh Holcomb, um, his Instagram account. <laughs> I'm going to debut a shirt too. I forgot. Wait the a second. Are you, are you okay with showing your body like this on the, on the video? Yeah, I don't care. Wow. Look at these muscles, guys. Wow. You really got to get on the YouTube for this one. <laughs> oh my God. I forgot, to put the, I forgot so, to put this shirt on. You're so muscular. Oh my goodness. Gravy. Who's Archie? Let me just mention this real quick. Okay. Archie. Um, remember when we performed in Ohio? Where did we play? In Columbus? We played at the... What was it called? The um, bottle something? Crooked bottle or something? Dang it. Where did we play? It was in a place. The something bottle, maybe? 
or the crooked corner <laughs> or something like that or the oh geez after this remix i'll 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 i'll, I'll explain let's just run to the remix and then i'll i'll, I'll talk about okay that again. so look this is from josh holcomb his instagram account is at or whatever it's josh dot holcomb music so josh as you normally would spell it h-o-l-c-o-m-b dot music and he has a band called lucky chops and their that that instagram account is at the lucky chops but also so their youtube channel as well with a ton of videos and quite a big following actually um and you can check that out as well like tons of videos and they they've been a band together for a long time now anyway did, he did this cover uh or whatever this cover or this um uh, it, it almost is a built. It's a building on of the piano cover that I did, and it's really cool. Here it is. <laughs> Okay, we're back. I just wanted to talk about this shirt. Save Archie, all right? We played at this place on our last tour, Brent, called Ace of Cups. And yeah, like re- I said, the crooked bottle. <laughs> you're, thinking the em- you're thinking of the empty bottle in Chicago, perhaps. I guess so, but I, I, yeah. something. Anyway, um, they are having hard times, of course, like many venues are. And they said that we were one of their, fan, one of their um, employee favorites, their employees of, uh, you know, when we came through. So they wanted to send me a shirt to spread the word to save their, um, you know, help help their venues stay alive. So um, just go to Archie Fox Live, at Archie Fox Live, and check out the hashtags Save Archie and save, hashtag Save Live Comedy. Oh. So, you know, once this pandemic ends, these venues will still be open and Brent and I can go on another tour hit up Columbus, Ohio, back to the Ace of Cups, put on another great show, that is unforgettable live performance like we always do. Hey, yeah, that was... You know what I mean? I just wanted to spread it. the word. They sent me the shirt. I said, send me the shirt. I'll give it a little plug. Let's go. <laughs> That's how we do it. <laughs> Let's go. Um, Let's go. Okay, so man, yeah, here we are. You know, what have you been up to, man? You've been busy, huh? You've been busy with that body, man. That body was looking crazy, man. I just saw a little peak. I had never seen such a body on Doug, <laughs> except for since he was in junior high. Well, the thing is, I've always had these muscles underneath, but I just got kind of like you got cut. I just, I just, I just lost the padding around the muscles. Now they came, you know, the padding went away. And then Are you working reveal, out? I'm not. No, I'm not working out at all. You just naturally are just so... I'm not like pumping iron. I get out there, I bike. I was at the beach the other day. Going to the beach in December? Imagine that. That's what I did. I went on a hike last night up to the top of Echo Mountain. You ever been up there? That was cool. Night hike. 26,000 steps. Okay, so you're working out the legs, but then how are you getting those tight biceps? (laughs) I'm saying I just have muscles. I don't really know why. They just... They're just there. Oh, so you admit it. I mean, you agree that you have a muscular body. I do kind of have a muscular body, but I don't, I didn't earn it. <laughs> I, I love it. Maybe because I'm just, just always, space. maybe I'm always like clenched and like just fished off. And that I mean, yeah, maybe it's isometric, it's like isometric style, like working out. You're full of rage. Yeah, that's what it is. You're full of rage. And so that rage is just coming out because you're, you're always flexing. I'm always like uh, slamming doors. <laughs> That'd be a fun way to work. That'd be a fun way to like work out is just like be pissed off and just be like slamming doors and like lifting up the stuff and like yeah, it's walking you, all like upset and like storming off and like you you slam the door behind you and the person goes, "Oh, what's wrong?" You say, "Oh, sorry, I'm just working on my quads." Exactly. Yeah. Or whatever, you know, I don't know. Quads are probably the wrong thing. You're like at the grocery store like on throw, my throwing big bags of like rice in your or like what's heavy, like big gallons of, 
you're just picking up all these gallons of water and just like throwing them in and like, sir, are you okay? Is there, is there a problem? Oh no, no. I was just working out. It's fine. You know, you know, because I barely work out when I carry gallons of water uh, up, up the stairs, I think to myself, okay, this is my opportunity to kind of work out here. So I start lifting the gallons of water like this as I, or I start lifting them up and down as I'm walking up the stairs. So I'm kind of getting a full body workout there. Or yeah, like if you go for a walk around the block, you could just like start picking up scraps of stuff. Like, well, they're just like, scraps. just like carry like a big load of stuff. And then your neighbors would be like, Hey, you need a hand? You need a hand with that? No, I'm just working out, you know? Would you ever go shirtless around your neighborhood? I went out to the front. You know when it was like a heat wave? I went outside to the front. It was like I was just sweltering. I just had my shirt off and I went out there, like kind of peeked around. Like, I don't want my neighbors. I'm not trying to be like that guy. I'm not was your would so your one neighbor didn't say, okay. (laughs) He saw your body and thought, oh okay. My neighbor, who you're referring to? He's a Vietnam vet, so he's kind of an older guy, but he's ripped. I'm oh, trying to look okay. like him. I'm trying to look like him. He's like, let me ripped. ask you something. Let me <laughs> ask you something, Doug. Are you proud of your body? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, um, can I ask you something? Else? I don't know about proud. I'm just like, I'm glad that I lost some weight over quarantine, and now it's looking. Now I'm getting compliments, like such as what I'm getting from you. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Are you swole? Are you, can I get a little tilt down on that camera? See what's going on down there? <laughs> what, what part of me are you asking to swole? Like how, how much of a tilt? I mean, put it this way. Degree, are you a little light? degree tilt? <laughs> a 45 or 90 degree tilt? Oh, it depends how swole you are. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on what time it is. You know? Right. Is it like noon or yeah, what? Is it, is it like yeah. three o'clock? What, what time is it? <laughs> or is it just a straight up six? Is it just six? Or is PM. it like a sundial? What are we talking about? <laughs> right. So let me ask you this. This is maybe getting too personal, but do you ever feel like, are you ever kind of look, do you ever look forward in any kind of way for say, somebody else to see your body like an opportunity to take my shirt off <laughs> or no i mean no but a legal now, i truly did i did not try to do that i meant to wear this shirt i had it sitting over there and i forgot to put it on no what i mean is is i mean say it's uh, a context in which you would you're supposed to take off your shirt let's say the beach even okay <laughs> are you kind of thinking okay cool i can kind of like show this off and like i'm kind of into doing that <laughs> be honest I mean, look, it feels a little better now to take it off than it did before. I'll tell you that. Yeah, you know? I bet. I bet. Now I'm like, all right, I'll t- I can take it off. I can like hold my own here. I don't have like, I kind of have abs a little bit actually, but I don't, I'm not like, it ain't like that. I don't have like 0% body fat or something. How many pack? How many, how much is your pack? I got like a Tupac. <laughs> really? It's just Tupac or six Pac? Or eight. Dude, I don't know. Probably four. You know how my mar- my arms are kind of muscly? My my I don't have I don't have like big bulbous like muscles at the uh, six pack area. You know? Oh you don't? I don't think so, so your strengths are your arms, I guess. And you got some you got some titty also. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. But you do have um What if I what if what if next time I saw you I took my shirt off and I had like ni- n- pierced nipples and I was like super tanned? I thought you were gonna say next time you take off your shirt, you have breast implants. You know, they're actually you know, they look feminine, you know. Somebody um who was it? Somebody was telling me that they were they remember watching who was it? Someone was telling me they were watching a movie and somebody with their shirt off in the movie they were, it was a man. They were so muscular that they thought that they had big boobs, like a female. I've seen, where did I, I just saw that, something like that. Somebody was telling me something about that. It was not Schwarzenegger. It was someone, 
else. And they were saying, oh yeah, I thought they had big, I was, I was kind of wondering why they had such big boobs. You know, anyway. to answer, to answer your question, sometimes I don't want to take my shirt off. Cause like, I don't want like <laughs> to make other guys jealous and stuff or make other people feel embarrassed about their body. I don't, maybe, maybe something like that. Like so, maybe one of my friends, you know, kind of got fatter over quarantine and I don't want to be like dunking on him. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Dunking on him. I want to be like, peel it off and just like, what's up, man? You're going to take your shirt off or what? Come on. Sit the waves. <laughs> I mean, I went to the you beach know, the other day. You take was like, it off. You ask him, you ask him, hey, can you, hey, can you put some lotion on for me on my back? You know, it's a good move that I always, wa I always wanted to do is like, uh, if you like see a cute girl at the beach, you know how you're like, excuse me, can you put lotion on? Yeah. You know, you, you go like this, like it's on, it's for your back. And she's like, sure. And then you spin around and you spray it down your front and you're like, ah, oh. I was just, and you just lay it. down yeah. you do like a bait and switch, you know, you, they think it's for your back and then you squirt it all down your front. Like you're a hot dog. <laughs> oh, you mean not just on, not your chest. You mean on your forty-five degree? <laughs> On the 45 degree tilt kind of thing? On your 12 o'clock, yeah. Yeah, on your 12 o'clock. Well, look, check this out. I was. Just I actually did that once. That. It, was, it was pretty funny. It worked out. I was me. just going to say that, though. You don't even have to act like it's a switch, though. You don't even have to do this, the gesture as if you're pointing to your back. You can just say, hey, can you put some lotion on me? And they say, sure. And they start to go for your back and say, oh, no, not the back, the front. <laughs> and I just think know, the, just, the, 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 <laughs> The visual of just spraying it on yourself and like almost like laying on your back, like <laughs> they have to come to you and like rub in what right, you right, right. Well, it's just funny because it's obviously so you you put like so much on that it's like a really white thing, so they have to keep rubbing and rubbing until it's like clear, you know? Yeah, and then you say, okay, now lower, <laughs> now lower, even lower. You like rip away your you have like a tear away outfit that you're just fully nude. <laughs> Actually, I got this. Check this out. So you're wearing trunks, right? And you're going, okay, lower, lower. And it's on the kind of chest. It's on the stomach. And then you, you rip off the trunks and the lotion's already on there. <laughs> it's just only exactly where your trunks are. They're like, where's your lotion? Like, no, you're like, excuse like me, can you rub in? Can you put on some lotion? Can you put some sunscreen on me? They're like, okay, where is your sun? You like rip it off and it's already there, like all white. <laughs> it's like, but there's a lot on there. It's, you know, thick and stuff, you know? <laughs> I think I pitched that idea to Eric Andre show once. The, really? uh, the rub, the lotion, like you go to the beach. Oh. I mean, it was like, it's a pretty good like YouTuber prank, but I don't know if it's like. Eric Andre show level. Um, it's more for way, like nerd. It's like nerdier, nerdier comedy or something. By the way, I, I wasn't smelling my hand just now in case anybody in the video thinks I was smelling my hand. <laughs> I, I, no I one just, thinks you smelled your hand. I wasn't doing, actually, to be, I'm going to be completely honest with you. This is what I was doing. I had to like, I had to, you know, sniff my nose in kind of, you know, I like had to do a, you know, like that, but it was, a. I had to do a stronger one. And when I do a stronger one, I do this with my, I do this usually you know like i kind of right. move you my over you get you, you like I focus on that you focus on the side. one if you go like this this one kind of closes and you focus on the one nostril no but wait yeah yeah something like that yeah anyway it makes me move my face my mouth and my nose to one side describing that for the listeners and I don't know, I just thought to myself, I don't really want to make that face right now. So I'm just going to cover my mouth and do it or cover my face and do it like that. But then I realized it looked like I was hardcore smelling my hand just now, but that's not what I was doing. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to just look at some of these questions. Oh, okay. Well, unless right. you want to keep jamming and what well, we, we can do. About. I mean, look, how long have we been recording? Cause I feel like we, why don't we jam for until a half an hour mark and then we can go to the questions. Okay. I mean, it depends when you, we have been a half hour, but you know, that includes oh, all we the have. intro and everything. Um, right, 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 right. Um, I don't mind jamming. I like to jam, you know? 
Unless yeah, you got a little. I mean, I don't really have anything I got to get off my chest right now, you know. No, it's more about you know. What, what do you mean you don't have it? Well, why don't you? I mean, you, you, got, you have sun. You have suntan lotion. What on did you? There what did you do this last week, Brent? I mean, I just need something to go off. Of, you know? Okay, you want to know what I did? Yeah. Uh, I've been doing just various projects and things. You know what I mean? I record podcasts and I've been playing some video games and, you know, I do video game review. You know what I did actually on Saturday? I'll mention this right now to people. I've been doing live streaming on Twitch games. Some I have been doing that sometimes. I did it last Saturday and I'll probably do it this Saturday. So if you're watching, listening to this on Friday, tomorrow, I think I will do it. Yeah, I've been playing games online and having not games online. I've been playing games on my TV, but I have a camera set up on the TV and I talk over and do commentary and I try to make jokes, but sometimes it's too, if the game's too hard, I can't even talk, but I don't know. It's Brent Weinbach games on Twitch. Is it blown up? No, but it's also (laughs) not, I don't even know if I can totally vouch for it as something that is worth checking out. Because especially if I'm not doing very well, it gets kind of repetitive and me going through the level. But some people say they like seeing it. So if you like watching people play games for some, you know, reason, you know, then maybe you want to check it out. Maybe actually I'm trying to set it up so that I can have other people doing commentary with me. And I thought maybe you could do it with me at one point because that might be kind of fun. I come to your house and I play with you. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you don't come to my house, but you kind of virtually come to my house, kind of, yeah. Do you want to mention that little thing we did the other day? Well, sure. We sh- we made it. Yeah, that was something we did last week. Um, I I actually did see Doug in person last, um, well, I don't know when it was, Wednesday or something, right? But I was so far away. Basically, we shot a video. <laughs> um and i said brent will you be in my video look we'll 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 have a camera it'll be like at the very end of my yard it will be zoomed in you walk right in the gate we'll have it you know come in at exactly 1 30 the can- camera will be set up we'll have masks on i'll have a mask on by the camera you can so- walk in here's your line and then you know i have been extremely strict about <laughs> the quarantine okay i'm surprised you did that to be honest well i was it was so far though i mean it was it was outside and basically doug and the camera person i mean i'm i'm more surprised you would be near you know the person doing camera is easy but he's in my bubble yeah i guess so i don't really i mean i don't trust (laughs) bubbles okay my bubble is myself (laughs) i am my own bubble Okay. But anyway, um, no, those, they, those guys also Doug has someone staying. I mean, can I mention someone staying at your place right now? Oh, uh, sure. Mikey, Mikey, Mikey Campman. My, he's in my bubble. They're making a two way crew video basically. And they, so the three of them were all on this one side. I mean, we're talking what 40 feet away from me or something like that, probably. <laughs> or maybe 50. Something like that. 50 feet. They were very far away. They were all wearing masks. And um, I did not have a mask on because, well, first of all, I've been, I'm in my own bubble anyway, but um, I, you know, I, my lips needed to be seen, you know, for this. Right. <laughs> and I wore a glove. So if I, I touched one thing, we won't spoil what it is that I touched, but I touched one thing that was a prop. I didn't even touch it. I had it gloved. I didn't touch a single thing. I didn't even open the gate. The gate was open. So I went over there and it was just one shot. So it was really, you know, it wasn't involved and I wasn't, I didn't have to do anything with, I didn't have to interact with anybody in the scene either. So it was very safe. Well, Brent, I was, know, I know your, your MO. So I was like, I'm going to have the gate. He doesn't want to touch anything. I had the gate propped open. I even had some latex gloves on standby. I go, Brent, there's some gloves there. And you're like, guess what? I brought my own glove. Well, there's no way I would have even wanted to touch the gloves, your gloves. You know what I mean? That's how. You would only want to touch my box of medical so grade. That's you don't even want to touch the box. Well, that's how bubbled out I am is that I'm not willing to even touch the other glove, this another man's gloves. And so I had my own glove and I just had one glove because I was only going to touch one thing with one hand. And um, it's kind of funny though. I think it made this, 
made the scene a little funnier to have it have a glove kind of you know but uh <laughs> yeah i actually saw doug i hadn't seen doug in person since march so that was kind of crazy it'd been eight months but you know i see you every week on video it doesn't feel that much different to me you know in yeah, fact this is like... this is more intimate in fact because i can see your whole face and i'm closer to you the closer to the screen sometimes you see my body actually you, seeing you shirtless just now is the most intimate i've been with you and you know since cabo you know <laughs> Um, I saw your naked body once. Well, from the waist up at that hotel room. Oh Under yeah, that was no big whoop. Everybody's seen, seen my I'm naked body. I'm just saying, body. I seen it. I'm just Everybody's saying. Everybody's seen me shirt. Everyone's seen me shirtless if they saw corporate, the Comedy Central. <laughs> you see that? Oh, that's right. I'm. Sur- I can't believe you did that. Well, like I said, it was. It's not. It wasn't a sexual context. It was, it's a. It was a funny scene and or funny couple scenes and you know I, I i like the material and also i don't know i wasn't the only one with the shirt off and i i actually thought it came out really well I, I like how it came out my nipples that is i like how my nipples came out and that no i'm just kidding um, <laughs> well done Barton just did a really good job of my nipples you know they added just the right amount of hairs on there and you know just the right amount of just the right amount of powder so that my nipples didn't get all glossy in the in the lights you know they tracked them in yeah they did a really good photoshop they did some really good uh adobe after effects on my nipples you know they made them nice and saucer like i i've been getting some jobs lately i got a job I got a few jobs lately that aren't jobs that I normally would do. And it's kind of interesting. I got hired to do special effects for a commercial to make someone be like on fire. Yeah. That's which is like something I wouldn't, I'm not really even a specialist in, but I kind of just figured it out. And I think they liked, were, were happy with the results. And um, I'm doing some sound design for something, which I am, you know, good at sound design, but usually people hire me to edit. And then when I'm editing, I do the sound design. This is just purely just sound design. Yeah. Interesting. You're doing pretty um, well during the quarantine. You know, you're doing, you, you know, you're, you're getting, you're, you know, you know, you're working. I was like working all day, like, you know, today stressing out about this pound cast, but this is my break. I'm actually on break right now. We're relaxing right now. We're just kicking back. We're getting to know each other. I'm really getting to know your body. I'm working. (laughs) I'm working on a remix uh, thing, me and Sir Spence. I think I probably played a little bit of it maybe last week or when Sir Spence was on the show. Uh, but yeah, I'm working on a little song. We're getting all these friends to do remixes of it. That's starting to turn out really cool. Anyway. Let's go to the questions. I am getting pretty, I am kind of busy these days. See, I tell you some stuff and you're like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, that no, ain't gonna work. No, it's it, it's it's no. I mean, you're busy. You're such a busy guy. I don't even know where to start. I mean, it's you. You live a charmed life. You know? What can I say? Um, let me see here. There's a question about Tom goes to the mayor in the base fest episode. Base fest. This is not. This is just for me, I guess. Who wrote the song "Totally Whizzed Out"? That is a deep cut from ages ago. I'm going to say Davin Wood and maybe Tim and Eric kind of wrote it and he just made that song. All right. That's just a warm up question. Warm it. We're warming up. You we're, know, warming we're warming up, up here. Up. There's some good stuff here that we can get popping off on. Um, let me see here. Can Brent please give us a cover of any song in the style of Bone Thugs and Harmony? <laughs> okay. That's, this is a good question. Let's give it a shot. Name a song. <laughs> Um, Let me think. I'm trying to think of a Michael Jackson song because then it's it could be. Broke his bone, and I'm gonna make them a money, and I'm gonna make them. A... Okay, I just want to get in the frame of mind of a bone yeah. thug. Brent Bone. We we'll call myself oh, like Brent Thriller. Bone. Thriller. Thriller. Because it didn't. It was it. Wait. I'm gonna get on my. Let's see. <laughs> and it. Because it closed the mid. Because it closed the. It closed the midnight. I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of hard to do, actually. Because I clipped the midnight. Oh, is it? 
something. Can you do it? Actually, that's actually well, just really what's hard. the what song do you know really well that you could just morph into that? I, to be honest, now that I'm trying to actually apply this practice, the Bone Thugs practice to another song, it's hard because it feels like Bone Thugs songs were written for Bone Thugs in mind by Bone Thugs for Bone Thugs by Bone Thugs. <laughs> It's for both. For, uh, anyway, um, so like, okay, I mean, Bone Thug songs. Can you sing Bone Thugs? And I'm gonna miss everybody. And I'm gonna miss everybody. It's don't the they sing like? Don't they like have these like long drawn out like notes? You know, they go like this. They, they no, you know what? They kind of innovated triplets. You know, triplets are so popular now, but they were kind of the ones doing triplets before a lot of people. So. Murder. I go to the toilet. I see it's like it goes to the midnight, close to the midnight, something looking in the stinging in the dark. You know, take my butt bite. Thriller. Some something like that, you know? Thriller. It's close to the midnight thriller. Close to the midnight close to the midnight thriller. Close to the mid All right, let's move on. Let's right. move on here. We're kinda of tripped up on this one. It was hard. It was a stumper. Laura is asking, any good movies or series you've watched or book recommendations? I got a few things. Um, I Over the summer, I revisited Brass Eye, you know, this 90s British show. I know you love that show. I love that show. But then there's this episode I never saw before, and I got a, I got a, a copy of it. It's called Pedogeddon. Have you ever seen that, Brent? No. Apparently this this episode got the show kind of canceled or pulled off the air. Oh, is it about pedophilia? Yeah, it's about pedophilia in um the UK and it is like it is so insane. It, it's like you can't believe that they made it. It's hilarious too, but it's like so absurd and uh, I got to check it out. Just like the way that they the graphics and everything and it's so f like cut together so fast. It's like a fake news, like magazine kind of like inside edition show or something it, or whatever. One of those like shows are that show. I, so I watched that episode many times, like throughout the summer, I would show friends of mine and um, every time it just kills so hard. And they're like, what is this show? If anyone could track Where, that episode oh, down, I could send you the file. A, I have like an MP4 of it or something. Give it, give it. Yeah, it's unreal. And I saw recently. I saw California Split. I think I got. I've been getting into Robert Altman a little bit. Have you ever seen that one? No. Oh, you got to see California Split. Oh, really? It's one of those Altman '70s classics. It's got um, Elliot Gould. <laughs> Well, George, it's already an Altman classic with Gould. George Seagal. I think that's who's in it. George Seagal. Yeah, that's good. I've been watching uh, Mandalorian. Yeah, I saw the first season. You know what? I like it. Yeah, it's not. It's pretty good. I saw. I saw the first. I mean, it's it's not. It's good. It's a good show. It's corny. It's, it's like. It's it's it takes everything that's cool about. Did I talk about this already? <laughs> it just takes like the good stuff from like the first star Wars, the early star Wars, it takes all that stuff. And they're like, they're like, let's quit trying to do all these new things. Let's just take the good stuff from the early star Wars. And just focus on that. We got the Sandman, you got the Jawas, you got the droids, you got the, you know, the Boba Fett guy. You got, you no, know, it's all John Favreau. Yeah. Favreau is like, let's just do the stuff from the first episode that killed. You got those cool sand speeders and you got the stormtroopers and you got space fights and you got all those sound effects, you know, and plus they're only a half an hour long and it's something perfect to watch. If you're just like eating dinner or I like to watch TV pretty much. The only time I watch it is when I'm eating like lunch or dinner or something. And once in a while, at night i'll just like watch a movie but um i got a show i've been kind of watching <laughs> this is i'm not recommending this but this is what i've been doing what well you know when i drive around los angeles 
there's this billboard that I see sometimes and I always was wondering what it is because it looked weird to me. It shows a, a bunch of people's faces, kind of almost like Brady style, but more than nine squares. Is maybe what style? 16 squares. Brady Bunch style, you know, just oh, a bunch right. of people's faces in a thing. And it says Chicken Girls season. <laughs> <laughs> said Chicken Girls season seven. Yeah. And I thought, season seven? <laughs> I, I've never heard. How is this in a seventh season? I never even heard of it. Chicken Girls? But I thought, what the heck is Chicken Girls? That sounds cool, actually, right? I mean, I thought, okay, Chicken Girls. I'd like the title. That's a cool title, Chicken Girls. What is that? So I looked it up. I finally remembered. To, I kept on thinking every time I passed the bill where I thought, Chicken Girls, I got to look that up. What is that? <laughs> I looked it up. And it turns out it's a web series. And it, it, it comes out. I mean, there's more than one season comes out per year. So I think it's only been around for a couple of years but I think there's two or three seasons that will come out in a year, you know, so that's why it's on season seven and it's made by brat brat TV. It's, and it's on YouTube and it's geared towards young girls. It seems like, and um, it's, I'm, I'm not trying to recommend this. I'm just saying I, I did kind of get sucked in a little bit cause I just, it's a, a world that's so foreign in a way. And it's kind of, it's kind of reminiscent of Disney Channel, but it's not at all like Disney Channel in other ways. And it's just kind of weird. It's a weird world. It's just weird. It's different. And so I got sucked chicken girls. Um, <laughs> I went from Game Boys, the web series Game Boys, to the web series Chicken Girls. Uh -huh. Game Boys is a, is a web series that was made during the quarantine. I don't know. I see this weird stuff on YouTube. It's just different, you know? It kind of reminds me of Degrassi, actually, but... It's um starts off they're in junior high these girls in junior high and then they go into high school. I'm not trying to recommend it. I'm just saying it's just kind of interesting because it's. I'm also trying to not say certain things because I don't want to. <laughs> I just don't want to say certain things, you know. Yeah, I'll just say bad. this. Just I'll just say this. Say say one thing. I'll say one thing. I, the first season of that show. I I can't. It's. It has t millions of views, right? And they have these social media teenage girls that are in the show. So they get a lot of people watching it, but it's made in such a, um, it's made in such a way that it just doesn't, it seems like uh, I, I, I'm having trouble spitting this out because I don't want to sound, uh, you know, a certain way, but it's, well, I'll just say it's very poorly made. <laughs> Fair it's enough. just very it's very poorly made i mean the shots are just really bad and the acting is horrible and it's just it's crazy to me that i just wonder how much money this is making and it's so bad it's just crazy how bad it is there is one actress in it who is who's not bad and then she has a younger sister who's actually pretty good she's pretty talented um but there's spinoffs from the show there's a show called manny and there's another show called uh Rooney's last call. Anyway, whatever. This is probably boring, but um, <laughs> it's interesting to see because I'm just thinking uh, it, it's crazy to me what the level of filmmaking or whatever you want to call it, the level of production that is put into the show and how much in revenue it's probably generating. And I know they have ad, they have a deal with extra, you know, the, the gum company extra because there's product placement in it and stuff. And there's, you know, anyway, there's extra stuff in it. And I'm just thinking, gosh, it's just, it makes me think I, we could easily make something like this and better. And we just need teenage girls that are on social media and have followers. We just get them in it and then just make something. And it would be, because it's, I don't know, it's just interesting, interesting to me. Well, Bubblicious, if you're listening, we want to do um, Rooster Boys. Rooster Boys. <laughs> um, what if we did that? What if we made a web series with social media influencer teenage boys? <laughs> I watched – well, I'll say this real quick. I read a book, um, Childhood's Ends by 
Childhood's End by Arthur C. Clarke. That's the latest book I read. Um, it's a sci-fi book from the 50s. It's pretty good. It's kind of disturbing, actually. It kind of left me like messed up a little bit. I'd recommend that. It's kind of a quicker, shorter read. Now I'm reading a, a biography about Tiny Tim. Oh, yeah. I think one of the pound pimples recommended it. I was like, I'll, I'll read a biography about some weirdo musician that I don't really know anything about. It's yeah, pretty, that's interesting. Pretty that's interesting. Easy. Pretty interesting. Oh, yeah. So um, speaking, then, yeah, speaking of part- shows, have you seen uh, How To with John Wilson? You know, I've been meaning to watch it. I was sent some uh, information about it to watch it that I haven't gotten around to it yet. Okay. Have you, you liked it? I liked it, yeah. I only saw the first episode, but like I said, I, I don't watch. Yeah, I, basically, it's good. It's really cool. I got I to gotta, um, catch up with that. Um, as far as books goes, um, I finally finished Cat in the Hat. And um, it's really cool. It's a really good book. You, you, and it kind of messed me up a little bit, actually, at the end. Right. Did we do this? I was kind of just. Did I already mention this? And we did this joke already. No, I mean I don't know. I can't remember where the book you mentioned last time. But I definitely have made the cat in the hat uh, joke. This is the third time. I've tried I need a new book. I like book. I like having a book that I just like. Want it's a new running gag. Reading reading. It's a new running gag for the Poundcast is that I'm I I read Dr. Seuss. <laughs> What's your favorite candy or snacks you eat on a regular basis? Ooh, besides Louisville vegan jerky. Well, That's a good question. Well, I mean, it's easy. Uh, I eat pistachio nuts. That's my favorite nut, pretty much. I invented the un the most unbelievable. Not invented. I stumbled upon the most unbelievable flavor combo yesterday that is the that i'm addicted to now it is basically tortilla chips you know your classic triangle not doritos but you know just maybe like sea salt flavor Mm -hmm. you dip it in this stuff that's called um it's almond cashew chocolate dip it kind of looks like it's where the hummus is it's kind of like a hummus but it's made from almonds and cashews but it's chocolate flavored i mean chocolate and chocolate hummus it's not hummus though there's no chickpeas okay. in it but it's got in it, that area if you're at the grocery store it's in got that it. area got it got it got i it. can go grab it at the end of the show and show you got it got like it, this it. is like the best thing i've ever had and then i put two black i'm way into blackberries right now it's my favorite berry I love blackberry. I take a chip. I did a big scoop of this chocolate stuff. And then I put two blackberries on it. And the blackberries like burst in your mouth. And then you hit that chocolate. And then you get that salt from the chip. It's like, it's the ultimate. Also, I perfected my, I've been perfecting my salad. And today I came up. Hold on. Let me just say this right now. That description you gave me, you just gave me is turned me into 12 o'clock right now. I'm at midnight. Can I get a tilt? (laughs) <laughs> i mean no seriously i'm hard for that whatever you just talked about i like doing weird weird flavor combos you know messing around well, me with, too me with too. different me little too. and i really like going to the store and finding weird little new chips and stuff you know i'll get you know what i when well, you know what i made today i found this um rice but it's not made out of rice it's it's called rice but it's made out of chickpeas so it's rice oh. But it's like, it's got more protein and it, it's not, it's, you know, um, no grain. Right. And it's like got more, uh, I don't know, some other kind of good, healthy thing. You know what I mean? I tried it and it doesn't taste like rice at all. Uh-huh. But what it does taste like is good. You know what I mean? Sometimes uh-huh. you get something that's supposed to be like, fake burger or something and it's like this doesn't taste like a burger at all or this doesn't taste like chicken but whatever it tastes like is good you know right 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 that's totally like that kind of stuff that's totally fair so let me ask you this let's get back to you said you were gonna you made a salad that you wanted to talk about i've been perfecting my salad oh and it's so good that i kind of want to do a food truck and it's just called doug's salad 
Yeah. Here's, here's what you get. There's a menu and it just says Doug salad. <laughs> That's it. I like that. Not even different sizes. Right. And it'll be cheap too. It'll be like four can bucks. Can I know what's in this or you, is it a secret recipe? Oh, I can give it to you. Red uh, cabbage, which is really kind of purple. Shredded. Okay. Um, chopped. I do chopped uh, spinach. And I'll explain why later. And then I put some toasted nuts in there. Probably. And every time I make it, it's a little different. Toasted nuts, cashews, almonds. Um, and then what else am I missing? Oh, maybe a little red onion if I got that. Date pieces for a little sweet. You know those date pieces you can buy? Yes, I do. Um, radishes sliced thin with the mandolin. So th- and then some carrots done the same way. And then usually something warm, like I put that that imitation rice stuff in there today. It was perfect. Really? Um, and then and some, we- and, then, and then I'll put this stuff, I'll put some kind of protein kind of thing in there. Sometimes tofu or sometimes like a fake burger kind of chopped up. But today I put this, this stuff I get at the farmer's market at this, from this Korean guy, which is like, it's hard to explain. It's like, you can only get it from this one guy, but it's really savory. Chop, it's all chopped it's it's all chopped up so each each scoop is like got a little bit of each thing in it you know you don't have the big leafy lettuce in there or the big leafy pieces of spinach and then you got to stuff those in and get the other stuff it's all oh and then i put for dressing and then i'll put turmeric and um pepper and then i'll put a little um white rice vinegar for dressing and the ultimate flavor toasted sesame oil <laughs> and can I ask you this? Will customers be allowed to make some modifications such as no onions, please? I feel like it'll probably be a bad business model to not have some options like that. Okay. Well, no, some some chefs are very strict about that. No, no changes. No, you know, they just say you have to eat it like the way I, you have to right. eat it exactly the way I want you to eat it. Be kind of cool to just be like, this is it. I'm going to like, just for my sake, I'm going to make it. This is how it is. If you don't want it, you don't have to buy it. Well, see, that's the thing is the higher the price, the restaurant, the less of a opportunity you have to change the what's in the thing right no substitutions right and i'm just thinking for the higher price i should be able to i should be able to request this it kind of reminds me of when i was at um you know when you stay in nicer hotels they charge you for more stuff you know for example internet is not free you have to pay for the internet or you have to just there's pay for other stuff in there that you normally would get for free if you were in a lower tier hotel. I'm just thinking if I'm paying a higher price for the hotel, you should be giving me more perks. What's up? Well, you get those stupid little uh, ketchups that are look, they look cute, but it's like a one. I kind of hate that kind of stuff. It's like a one serving and then you, you just throw it out. Yeah. What do you, in reference to what? Well, that's one of the perks you do get at a higher, higher end hotel. When you get the room service, you'll get that ketchup. Yeah, and it's yeah, like a it's, tiny little one and it's just good enough for one serving. You know what I'm saying? Big whoop. I'll take the free internet instead. Thank you. Right. Yeah, I don't know. I call BS on these, uh, these fancy things like I, that. You know what I, I heard mean, recently? I you know what I heard recently is like, more expensive cars or like, um, you know what I'm saying? Like luxury cars, you know what the difference is between that and like a regular model with has the same engine is they're, they're quieter. They make them like quieter on the, like when you're riding on the inside. Oh, just the engine. Just like the overall sound deadening is like better. I might be wrong, but I think that's got to be the case in certain. You never get into well, a, like fancy Rolls Royce and it's just like you're on the highway and it just sounds like you're in a quiet room. 
Mm. Well, something. I've never been in one. I don't think I've ever been in a Rolls Royce. I think you've never been have in you? a Rolls Royce. Yeah, I'm all you've the, been I'm, in a Rolls Royce all the time. <laughs> people are picking me up in their Rolls. <laughs> I got DJ Khaled it's... coming over picking me up. <laughs> no, my oh, friend. Yeah, my, my friend is a car guy, Spencer, and he's always buying old cars and fixing them up. He had a Rolls Royce. It was like a '70s one, but even that one was like really you could tell was like it's fancy fancy yeah just like all the trim well those rolls royces they have all those the, the exterior just looks I mean, when you're driving in it just feels like you're in a boat it's just like uh -huh. you know yeah what were you saying the exterior what well it just it looks really that's the classic rich person's car you know i, mean, it just I know has the you know the way it looks it just it's got all that classic rich it just makes me think of a mansion, you know, it makes me think of Nico Nico mansion. <laughs> wait, I think you, I, wait, what's your favorite snack? I already went through mine. I said pistachio nuts. Oh, that's it. Just me. pistachio I, nuts. Well, I mean, no, I mean, what can you, if you want a treat? Yeah. What about if you get chocolate chip cookies that have a little bit of chew to them, you know, not super chewy, but you know, like, you know, fresh baked cookies that kind of chew a little bit a little, a little crispy bit. on the outside and then chewy on the inside just you know not not super hard cookies but you know just you know i'd get salt and vinegar lace salt and vinegar to potato chips and i love eating the cookie with the potato chip mm, yummy <laughs> it's so good and you just i like that chocolate chip cookie with the lays salt and, and i like and i think lays salt and vinegar potato chips are better than all the other brands okay Miss Vicky's, all that stuff or whatever. I mean, Lay's is the best. It has the most simple ingredients for it. Because all those other ones add sugar. Why do you need to have sugar in this? You don't need sugar for this. Well, you're, Lay's, you're, you're making it be sugary when you have that cookie and the, and the chips together. Yeah, yeah, I know. So I don't need That's more why, sugar. I don't because need, they understand that that combo is what people want. I don't need more sugar. Um, the, you know, Lay's... Lay's brand actually doesn't, there's very little ingredients in it for salt and vinegar potato chips. And they're really good too. I love the, the lightness of the Lay's ones too. There's, it's a, they're thinner chips and they're perfect. I got to say Lay's is one of the most famous brands and yet they do it right. Those other brands try to get too thick because they try to think, oh, we're going to look like we're using real potatoes here or something like that. And they can make these thicker, harder, crunchy kind of, you know, salt and vinegar chips. And I'm just, I don't want all that. I want the light, crispy crunch. <laughs> hmm. Here's one hack that I, I've been getting into hacks and figuring out. Oh, how to simplify. By the way, I like to add cheese to my cookies as well. Okay, dude, you're burying the lead here. That's oh. freaky. No, that's freaky. What but, cheese you know, are you putting on your cookie? Different kinds. Um, you can do Swiss cheese is good. Or, on um, what cookie? Chocolate chip. Dude, that's a, you're a freak show, man. No, I'm not. It's really good. And uh, also, or, or smoked Gouda could be good, too. I guess cheese is next to milk, and if you like milk, you might as well... Cheese, I guess... It's not just that. I mean, it's just... It's good, man. You know? <laughs> what were you going to say? Dang it, I forgot. What's on your Christmas list this year? What'd you ask for Santa from Santa? <laughs> I asked for a game. Uh, you get presents. Who buys your your gifts? Mom, uh, my family gets gives me gifts. You know, and I I usually get a gift from there's a friend or two who might give me a gift. You know, but oh, um, that's about one. it. I might have to get you one. You don't need to get me anything. There's nothing you would know, would know what to get me. What, do you get, what would you even think to get? I'd get you some know? art for your wall. Nah, I'm not going to put it up. I would just, this is what I would do. I'd have this art and I'd put it away and I'd say, I can't, I'm going to put this up once I ha live in a house and I can put this up in a house. Because that's what Sean is asking. Will Brent hang some art on his wall in 2021? No, I will not. I will not. I will start to hang up art once I am in a house. Once I'm Kaiser Permanente and at my own in a house that I'll be in forever, then I will be Kaiser Permanente. Once I'm Kaiser Permanente, what, what, once I'm in my final, the next place I live will be the final place. That's what's I mean, up. Yeah. 
If I was you, I would be hanging up art. Definitely. I have too much. I don't really have enough space. I, as you can see, I do have art a little bit there, you know? Yeah. The giving tree. I have art all over the place. I have too much. I have stuff in my basement piled up straight up. Yeah. Um, no, I keep it just blank, man. I, cause I just, there's always this feeling of temporariness and I don't want to put too stuff up for that. You know? And how long have you been there? <laughs> I don't even want to say been here a while though, but <laughs> no, I actually, I Trust me, to, it ain't temporary. My goal is to move in the next five years or less, maybe three. You can have art up in for three years, you know, just I don't for the Zoom's sake. How about some art that you just can leave there? You don't really like, you know, you just like you can, when you move to your ultimate Kaiser Permanente, you can just leave it for the next person and say, Hey, you know what? That one's on me. It's Jeff like a big Koons, Jeff Koons piece. Take it. It's a big, just picture of poo or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. I'm trying to think what, oh. I feel like weird stuff has happened. Like, Oh dude, do you want to hear something weird? And it's not even that yeah. funny. It's not even funny. It's uh -oh. just a disturbing thing that happened the other day. Uh oh. I was driving to the grocery store. It doesn't really matter. I was just driving through like a neighborhood, not in my neighborhood, a couple neighborhoods over. And I was just sort of casually. I was I was moving. So what I what I saw was a glimpse. You know. I what I did see was a man on his cell phone standing. Um, on a sidewalk, you know, talking kind of like this. And then I like looked down and there was a man face down in the sidewalk. Hmm. And I think his eyes were open. He was like this. Oh my gosh. And he was holding a leash. He was an older man. Huh. And he was, a dog was, you know, he was clearly walking his dog before he went, he was in this position and his dog, he had a big kind of like German Shepherd dog. And the dog was just like, it wasn't freaking out. It was just kind of like, you know, standing by. The dog was just sort of like looking around. And then as I passed, just the, I could just tell like the way this guy was. I'm like, that guy was dead. I'm pretty sure I just, I just witnessed a dead man. He wasn't like a homeless guy. You know, he was just like an older guy walking his like dog. And this guy on the phone must have been like 911. Because I, I was about to pull, when I saw the guy laying down, I was like, should I pull over? And then I'm like, well, that guy on the phone is already on the case. And then like a minute later, a, f a fire truck came roaring past me. Hmm. Sorry to bring it down here, but hmm. it's a disturbing sight well, the other day. I can, I mean, look, if we're gone to the, you, you if we're on the, the level, you want to go well, see the body? I saw one in my dream kind of not quite a dead body, but it was something like that. I had a weird dream last night. Here we go. Getting into dreams. Are people going to be interested in this? Huh? Is it wet? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it wasn't sexual if that's what you're asking, but it was kind of wet though. <laughs> um, what happened? Just I, a lot of crazy stuff happened. I wasn't in the dream, by the way, I was just observing it. And there was care. It was more like I was watching a movie, but I'll just tell you the one part that was really weird and kind of disturbing was that there was a guy in it who he was in this sort of how or apartment, I guess. And there was another prison and there was all this crazy stuff that happened. These two intruders came into the, into the apartment and they were kind of hassling one of the people there. And he tried to escape the guy and he went out the window and then he tried to jump onto the ground from where he was. And he was, he jumped either two, he jumped like kind of two stories or something like that, or maybe just one story up or something like that. So it was enough to sort of make the jump maybe, but he was not wearing any shoes. He was barefoot. And so he hit the ground and the, he thought that he made the jump successfully, but he, after a moment he realized that the jump, the ground had, his bare feet hitting the ground had shattered his legs on the in, in, internally. And his, he just, he lost control of his bowels and this poo just, 
just just all came out of his butt and uh, like filled his pants <laughs> it's more it was it sounds kind of funny i guess but it's, it was actually really disturbing what a dream it's kind of a his, wet dream you're right well that's why i'm saying it was kind of wet but his <laughs> his he basically lost control of his bow like he basically completely lost control of his bottom half so first his his pants filled up with poo and then his legs just collapsed it was almost like his bottom half melted and he sort of fell into a puddle of his own sort of flesh and poo and stuff. And it was just sort of this torso that was in this puddle, actually kind of his torso kind of melted too a little bit. And he was kind of just laying there like back on the ground. And it was weird. This hit the sort of mess of stuff sort of seemed to form in it. It kind of took the shape of almost like a, an insect like a moth or something. And the, and then this other bug, the smaller bug flew onto sort of his side and was kind of buzzing and kind of just, I don't know, at his side. I don't know. It was weird. And that was like the last shot of this guy was just laying down and as this sort of weird insect thing. It was so weird. It was bizarre. Anyway, that's amazing so, that you can remember so many details because, like, I always have these crazy oh, dreams, and then, like, one minute later, it's just like I just forget it. Yeah, I um, sometimes I write, I wrote that dream down. I mean, there was a lot of stuff that happened in that dream. I'm not, but that was the most, that was the most, you know, hardcore part of it. It was kind of disturbing. All right, let's do a couple speed round questions and then we'll go to after dark. And then we got we have to do those uh, love questions or whatever. Oh, we'll do that after dark too. Yeah. Um, uh, somebody asks, that now we're on, I'm on the Instagram questions here. They ask, what was the last movie you watched? And I forgot to mention Putney Swope. Have you ever seen that? I think you mentioned this. Did uh, I mention this last time? Last yeah. Week? Yeah, well... Anyway, that was the last movie I watched, I guess. So I don't have any interesting thing. Okay, speed round. Let's see what else here. The last movie I watched, I can't even, I can't, Spain, I can't recall. I've been playing a lot of games lately is the thing. You know, I've played something like 47 games or something like that during the quarantine. That's a lot of games. Anyway. If you were being sent to a desert island together and could only pack three things inside one piece of carry-on sized luggage, what three things would you collectively pack? I'm serious. Not a joke. So you and I have to negotiate here. More like a game show question that will give your followers some insight on how to best analyze you. I mean, this is not like a question you can just answer quickly. I say we each get our own one thing, and then for the third thing, we have to like Rochambeau for it or something, you know? I'm just trying to think of what, what, what is on the island already, though, you know? Yeah, it's like... Is there drinking water? You probably should have asked, like, what movies... I mean, because, like, I'm thinking about practicality Me i'm too. thinking i'm, thinking I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna bring a jug like a, some kind of receptacle to hold water and boil like a metal yeah. canister that i could i was thinking some sort of filtering system like if i can yeah, there we a go fil yeah. a filtering system of sorts then you know then we could filter the water and then we'll have water to drink okay so here's what i would bring probably, brent this is probably not what they were asking here's what i'll bring a bag of chips and then a genie that can grant as me as many wishes that I'd like. <laughs> right, right. Well, how about this? If This is what I would do. If I'm just trying to be practical. I get a water filtering system. We can both share that, okay? Um, and then we, I would also bring a, a, some sort of cooker, you know, some sort of stove or something that we can use to cook foods. And I would also then, and the third item would be the 1975 april issue of playboy um because um there's some really good articles in there that you and i could read to each yeah. other before we go to bed at night <laughs> we, <laughs> no, split that. we can split that one up you know <laughs> we could share it we could both look at it together that's what i'm saying that's what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> all right speed round what else has we got here does brent skate <laughs> 
never also, have, never will. I'm gonna say no. Also, are you a heel flip or kick flip guy? I'm a kick flip guy. Heel flips are lame. I will say this. I did try to skateboard for a second when I was a youngster, you know, because I had friends who skateboarded and I said, okay, I'll, I'll try it. The first skateboard I got was one of those really weird it's like not a modern day skateboard it was an old-fashioned skateboard it looked you know had a pointed ends you know it's it wasn't curved in any kind of way do you know what i'm talking about doug as a skateboard person wasn't curved it's it was not curved like it didn't have any kind of it just was the tail didn't go up it was just like right tail didn't go up it was flat and it it was pointed at the ends you know and it's small they're really tiny it was probably some kind of old-fashioned skateboard from the 50s or something yeah and then after that i got another skateboard that did have a curved thing and i tried using it but i just i never got used to i could never get used to it i never tried yeah whatever it's not for everybody and that's why it's good it's not that what if you guys did an action movie what would be the abstract what would the abstract be if we did an action movie the abstract that's an abstract question. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Our movie would be called like... Called Rooster Boys. We called like Nickel Pounders. And we're these, uh, we're these guys trying to blast acorns and we have to steal. We're bank robbery, robbers, but we only want the nickels. <laughs> you know? We're not trying to get a lot of money. We're just trying to collect nickels. For the Try to be the nickel kings. Yeah. Do you guys know about Acorn TV? I'm not a subscriber, but I found out about it when I saw Dress Up Gang. My Acorn is on blast. Yeah, I've seen the ads for that. I don't know. I've, said, I've heard about it. Yeah, Acorn. Best and worst childhood memory. I don't know. We don't want to. Who cares? I don't want to say my worst childhood memory. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> it's like best. Shoot, I don't even know. Worst childhood memory? What a weird question. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, there's, you know, there's, a, I mean, I could, I could probably talk about stuff, you know, getting bullied at school or something like that when in elementary school, you know. Nah. I'll just, fine, I'll share one. This is one of, the, this is not the worst, but this is, uh, this is a memory I have that I now find amusing to some degree. But I remember in elementary school, there was this one kid who picked on me. He had an Afro. He had this, I remember a huge Afro. And I was in the bathroom one time and I knew that I, I was, I knew there was going to be trouble when he came into the bathroom with his friends. But I remember he picked me up. He was older than me. You know, I was in um, first grade, I think. Yeah. And I was in first grade and he was probably in third or fourth, you know, he picked me up. And he held me, I think his friends helped him too, pick me up. They picked me up and held my head over the toilet. And there was a gigantic piece of poo in there that I think, I don't know who left that there, but it was like, it was one of those white poos, you know, like the white poo. No. You know what I mean? Like sometimes poo is white. I, not mine. And mine's never been white, but I remember seeing white poo in, in the, uh, it, I'm not white, like it wasn't beige, like the one we, we did in that pound house episode. Like you're talking white. white, white. Well, it was partially white. Yeah, it was white. It was white. It was partially white. Yes, white, white. And but it was just big. It was a massive piece of poo in the toilet, and he was he was holding my head over it, and he didn't put my head in it, thankfully. But that was kind of traumatizing. Um, I remember eventually I told my dad about it and my dad came to the school and talked to him and my dad was very he didn't reprimand him or anything he was like treated him very respectfully but the kid never um he never messed with me again actually isn't that kind of such a pussy thing of me to bring my dad to my my dad to talk to him but i was six years old what do you expect you know right well I'll, okay i do have i'll tell about my best childhood memory and then we'll go after dark Okay, so I was about third or I think I was in fifth grade. And there was this third grader and he had um he had this like really crappy haircut and his hair was like sticking up and he just got glasses so he looked like a real dork, you know? And so I I I 
after school, I said, hey, dork. And I tripped him and I pushed him and his face smashed into um, the jungle gym. Oh, gosh. and it, it smashed his glasses. And then me, my friends were like, ha ha, you kicked that kid's ass, dude. And then like, I just felt so great. And then the next day his dad came and his dad was like, why are you bullying my son? He's a third grader. You're a fifth grader. I grabbed a log out of the toilet and I threw it at this kid's dad's face. <laughs> I'm like, you're a dork, dude. And I just chucked it at him. <laughs> and neither that kid nor his dad ever bothered me again. And I was pretty cool at school after that. Was that back when you used to grow your hair out? That's my really? best memory. <laughs> that, yeah. <laughs> That's All right, funny. let's wrap that's it good, up. I I get a good, a, That's a good memory to go out on. <laughs> it's just like great, my best memory. All right, let's wrap it up. Thank you for listening to the Poundcast. If you want to keep listening, we're going to keep talking. I'm going to get through more of these questions and we're going to get to the the love questions. We're going to ask the 36 other. questions to for to what is it? It is 36 questions that lead to love. So we're going to see. We're going to try. These might be lame too, but we're also going to dip back into the listener questions. This could be interesting. You don't want to miss this. You don't want to miss this. If you, if you don't want to miss it, go to patreon.com slash poundcast. Subscribe. Thank you to subscribe. Thank you to Chloe Bonilla, Jack Birch, El Bircho, uh, and uh, Nathan Pittman and Jackie Montana for their help. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you to LouisvilleVeganFoods.com. Use the code word POUNDCAST. They are a wonderful sponsor. And once again, get your tickets now for the New Year's Eve Comedy Mega Show, December 31st. Get them while they're cheaper. Yeah. That's how we do it. Let's go after dark. Peace. Welcome to the Poundcast.